Hello friends, I am here to answer a call from the community. Anything you need, I'm there for you. Eric over at Four Leaf Cards has asked us to show a tabletop display of some of our favorite cards, and I'm happy to oblige. But first, I've got a care package from an awesome community member to share first, so stick around and check these out. You know, I'm actually looking forward to this. Uh Hello friends, I am John and I am a 3D 80s kid. So I've got a package that I received from Joe over at Four Soft Corners. Sent me a care package. Let's uh, see what is inside. I got some bubble wrap. We've got a note on this one side. It's a note. And John, thank you for everything you have done for me and my channel in the form of gifts, support, and most importantly, friendship. I hope this will be a good representation of this player for your Hall of Fame project. Thanks, Joe Forsoft Corners. That's a good note. Wow. Good note. All right. Oh, wow. Joe. <laughs> this is awesome. 1939 Playball Archie Vaughn in a gorgeous SGC 2.5. You hit a home run here, Joe. This is just awesome. You're the man, Joe. Thank you so much. That is such a great addition to the wall. Uh, Archie Vaughn, Hall of Fame shortstop, Pittsburgh Pirates. And fun fact, I went to high school with uh, his granddaughter, I think is what she was. Uh, her name was Patty Vaughn. So, uh, Archie Vaughn there. Thank you so much, Joe. This is great amazing gift. So now let's get to my tabletop display. Today I'm going to be showing my collection of pre-war Hall of Famers. Oh yeah, really old stuff. As my last few videos have all been focused on the post-war variety and you know the change of plan that I've made in my collecting approach. And uh, so here we go with all the cards I've collected so far, pre-war baseball Hall of Famers. Enjoy. To kick things off on my pre-war Hall of Fame tabletop display, I've got Fred Clark, player manager with the Pittsburgh Pirates. This is a 1911 T205. Love the gold borders on these cards. Uh, he was actually the manager for the Pirates when they won the World Series in 1908 against the Detroit Tigers. Four games to three, in which uh, Honus Wagner was able to defeat Ty Cobb on those Tigers teams. Up next, we've got the 1913 Napoleon Lajway game card. The player so good that they named the team after him and became the Cleveland Naps. Only time that has ever happened, I believe, in any major sport anywhere in the world. Up next, we got the 1919-21 W514 strip card of Walter Johnson. My only representative at this point of the inaugural Hall of Fame class, as he was considered the greatest starting pitcher in the early days of baseball there, being the, the leading vote-getter among the pitchers in that class between him and Christy Mathewson. Up next, we've got Eddie Roush, the center fielder of the Cincinnati Reds, when they uh, actually won the 1919 World Series against those Chicago White Sox of forever of infamy and he spent the rest of his career trying to tell people that the Reds would have won that series anyways as they never got a chance to win another World Series during his career and were ever forever doubted as being the better team that season and this is his 1921 W516-2-2 strip card the extra dashes or the extra variants they have here as you can see one of the variants is having a reverse negative picture like you see with the reverse Reds logo. The other dash section has to do with the font style of the printing. So, Up next, we've got Tris Speaker in this gorgeous 1921 W551 strip card. Center fielder uh, at this point with the Cleveland team and uh, was considered to be a super fast player. Uh, they thought to him to be the greatest defensive center fielder of the early years of baseball. He reportedly played very shallow, like Willie Mays did, as he had the speed to catch up to those uh, deep fly balls. 
and also great hitter, all-time leader in doubles still to this day, well over 3,000 hits, and a member of the second class of the Hall of Fame. Max Carey here with the 1922 W573 strip card. These are ones that look identical to the American Carmel set of that same year, only they end up being blank back here with the strip cards that are hand cut. Up next, 1926 W512 Rodgers Hornsby. His one year on the Giants in this one as he was traded from the Cardinals that season and only spent one season on that team. And this would be at uh, multiple 400 seasons, by far the greatest offensive statistics all time of any second baseman. So at least clearly the best second baseman of the pre-war era. Up next, uh, Yingling's Ice Cream, the uh, temporary condition for this beer manufacturer during Prohibition with this 1928 card issue that claims to be Bill Terry, yet it is not actually a photo of Bill Terry. It is in fact a picture of Zeb Terry that was first used on cards in 1917. As this set actually duplicates a lot of older pictures of some of the players in the set. Like for instance, the Babe Ruth that appears in this set is a duplicate of again, an older picture of him actually when he was on the Red Sox. And they just, uh, you can't see the team name on the photo for Babe Ruth on this set. Up next, uh, we're going over here. Up next, we've got 1933 Gowdy, Joe Sewell. Longtime Cleveland Indian shortstop, but spent the last few seasons of career, including for this picture with the New York Yankees. This would be a scrapbook back damaged one. That's why, if you're wondering why, is it a one when it looks so nice? Up next, we have got Carl Hubble here in 33 Gowdy, with one that is just missing a little too much border on one side, making it a Vargan, min sized but very nice looking card. And Adam Vintage Sanctuary constantly comments that he loves this card, and I agree. Beautiful orange background on that one. Up uh, next, we've got 34 Gowdy with Lefty Grove, the greatest pitcher of the 1930s. And Big reason why the late 20s, early 30s Yankees were not able to be the juggernaut that the 50s Yankees were is because Lefty Grove and others on that dominant Philadelphia Athletics team. Uh, also 1934 Gowdy, Charlie Geringer, Hall of Fame second baseman with the Detroit Tigers. And then we've got Hazen Kai Kai Kyler, the only Hall of Famer that appears in the series of the Chuck Klein says versions of 34 Gowdy. And then we've got Sam Rice in the th uh, 35 Diamond Stars card. This would be the last season of his career there that he played for the Cleveland Indians after uh, spending most of it with the Washington Senators. Then in 39 play ball we have got Lefty Gomez. Another one of the great left-handed trio of pitchers there from the 1930s. And lastly, thanks again, Joe, for this gorgeous Archie Vaughn card, Hall of Fame shortstop of the Pittsburgh Pirates. So let's zoom out and see them all at once. There we go, the current state of my pre-war Hall of Fame baseball card collecting. Glorious. Glorious. All right, huge thanks again to Joe over at Four Soft Corners. Such a tremendous gift, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joe. And to Eric over at Four Leaf Cards. So thank you for all you do for the community and reaching out, getting us all involved in different activities throughout the year, such as this one. Thanks, Eric. And thank you, everybody, for watching, and I will see you next time. Well, see you next time. Yeah, unless I get lucky and break a leg. <laughs>